this meat right here this meat is tender juicy and delicious and you know what you just got to pick it up and it comes right off the bone it is absolutely scrumptious and i am talking about these smothered neck bones let's make some this is approximately two and a half pounds of neck bones. It all came in one pack. These are nice and meaty and they are marbled really nicely. So that lets me know they're going to be juicy. I am going to tenderize these by using approximately one cup of white vinegar. I am keeping them on this flat surface because I want to make sure that all of the meat is touched by the vinegar to ensure that they are going to be nice and tender. I'm going to let these get room temperature and then I'm going to season. It has hit room temperature. It's time to season them up. I am using Worcestershire sauce. Yes, it goes really well with pork, believe it or not. I am also going to season generously with some salt. Salt is very important. We're also going to add pepper. You know you have to add pepper. Salt and pepper go together. And then I'm also going to use my favorite seasoning, which is garlic powder. Yes, I put this on everything. And finally, I am going to use a very fragrant seasoning, which is thyme. I love the way thyme tastes with pork. And when you want to make sure that all the meat is covered, you hold your seasoning up pretty high. And then I make sure that all your meat is covered. Once I have seasoned everything, I am going to go in with my tongs and I'm just going to rub the meat in the seasonings that hit the cutting board. I want to make sure that everything is covered with this nice, beautiful seasoning. Your meat should look like this. You want to make sure that as much of the meat is covered as possible. Once it's all seasoned, it's time to hit it with some flour. This flour is going to serve two purposes. We're going to brown the meat prior to slow cooking it. And also we want it to make its own gravy. This flour is going to make the gravy. Make sure you season front and back with the flour. We want to make sure that every single neck bone is covered in that flour. Once it's all covered, it's time to brown them. You want to have a pot that has a lot of surface area. I am actually using a Dutch oven. This can be used on top of the stove and also the oven, and it has a great amount of space. If you don't have a Dutch oven, it's okay. Just use a really, really big skillet. You're going to oil it, and then you want to drop your neck bones in the oil. You know your oil is hot when you put your flour in there and you see it bubble a little bit. We are browning these because browning serves multiple purposes. First, it adds a depth of flavor to the meat. It adds a nice richness and it also adds color. We want nice, beautiful color on these neck bones. You're going to put them all in the pan. Make sure they each have its own space. It's okay if they're bunched together. Make room, get them all in there. Once they're all in the pan and they have brown for approximately three to four minutes, it really doesn't take a long time, then you are going to flip them over. You want to get a nice color on all sides. You don't want it to be too dark. You want nice brown color on all sides of the neck bone. This is going to add a beautiful flavor. Once your neck bones are nice and brown, you're going to take some hot, stock and you're going to pour it over the neck bones. You want to make sure that your stock is hot. We do not want to reduce the temperature of the pan. We want these to cook nice and evenly. After you've poured your stock over your neck bones, go through with some tongs or a spoon and you want to just loosen the bottom of the pan. This is called deglazing. You want to get all that goodness that's stuck to the bottom of the pan. You want to get those little bits. You want those floating around. This is called flavor. We want as much flavor as possible. After you've done that, you just cover and you're going to reduce the heat and cook for approximately two and a half hours. After two and a half hours, go ahead and take a peek. Now, I want you to check on this before two and a half hours, but look at this. It created its own gravy, we, and we didn't have to do anything. We just let it sit. 
the neck bones are tender, it's definitely time to plate these up. These smell absolutely amazing. I'm so excited. I have some white rice and also some vegetables, zucchini actually. These are so nice and big. You only need about three neck bones per person. That would be a great serving because these are so meaty and juicy. I want to show you how delicious these look. They look scrumptious and they're going to taste scrumptious with the white rice. You know you got to go in there with the gravy. Gravy is my favorite part of this dish, believe it or not. As this was slow cooking, bits and pieces of the neck bone fell into the gravy. So you know this gravy is going to be delicious. Load it up, put the gravy all over the neck bones, and then you know you got to go back in and put some gravy over the rice and then you have a complete, delicious, home-cooked soul food meal. Smothered neck bones, one of my favorites. Try it out. You're absolutely going to love it. Bon appetit. Let's eat.